Can I look at the camera for a sec? Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice. <laughs> oh, that'll do just fine. And you have a producer working with you? No, sir. Okay. Um, what if you found out that I don't even put these out? I'm just some guy. I know, you're just a creep. There's nothing else you need. We got your water, we got your hat, we got your phone. Yeah, can I take my wallet out and put it on here? Yeah! It's kind of huge with all that money I have. Congrats, dude. And you're carrying that around in cash, huh? <laughs> I normally forget to do this, but you want to say hi to my cat? I know you're a cat guy. Hi, do you have a real cat? Unfortunately, oh. that's... I don't. My my family does. I grew up with cats. I'm in the I'm in the market for a cat yeah, for cats. The problem is, you know what? That's a little teaser. We'll tell you guys right when we get back from theme music. Scoot doo, blabbery blue. Scoot dee. Oh yeah. And we're back. The problem with cats are a lot of people are allergic, and I have people over. Podcasting. Let me, uh, I know that you're. Oh, wow. I, I didn't hear the no. That's actually the furthest I think I've had uh, ever any guest ever. I should know better, right? I, I deal with microphones daily. Yeah. Is that good? Let's see. Check, check, check. How do you sound? Uh, I sound all right to me, but I'm well, not the producer. You're probably your biggest critic. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, hello. Sounds good to me as well. All, all right. right. Glass is clean. Yeah. Cat's uh, conversation started. Who's on your socks? It looks like Mark Norman. It's Ronnie Chang. Oh, is that racist to me? Uh, no, it's just a, a misidentification. It's not racist, though, because I guessed somebody that was a different ethnicity. Well, I don't think it would be racist just even if you guessed anyone. If you're just guessing. Well, my argument would be if you feel that way, then why did you say anyone instead of suggesting Bruce Lee or something? What do you mean? Well, if you think that you could suggest anyone, I w you could have given another Asian person as an example. Right. I, I, I don't know. Would that make you a bad person if you were just guessing? Gulp, gulp, gulp. Who knows anymore with Gen Zers <laughs> these days? You know what I mean? <laughs> what I mean is that's terrible that you even asked me about my songs. I'll edit it out. <laughs> Keep it in. Todd, Todd? Yeah. Todd, um, nice to meet you. I have to imagine that... Uh, We've never met. I know I've been at shows that you, that we have performed on. I feel like I was thinking about that. Like, have I met this motherfucker? I don't think so. And I thought maybe at least like quickly met you once. I don't know if there was a quick meet. All right. uh, typically, when I if I do a show with somebody whom I know and I know doesn't know me, mm -hmm. unless there's organic, we're in the green or something. I uh, I probably didn't say anything. Okay, you lay low. I don't know if I lay low, but I'm not jumping up. Can I lower, speaking of low, can I lower this in my ears a little bit? Yeah, you know, I had on, do you know Adam Ray? Yeah. Uh, he was, wait, is is that you? That's me. This is you, right? Yeah, yeah. How's that? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, so that, uh, he wanted things up. And yeah. I, and I haven't put it back. And I don't know if that's defensive of me. I don't know if I'm ratting on Adam or promoting him. No, he just has different preference. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's Whoa. very rude of me. I'm sorry. Barack Obama. Oh my God. You should take that. Bleep this. It's my mom. Oh, really? Yeah. My mom's in town. Oh, okay. Speaking of cats, um, sometimes my parents come uh, here. They're from Cleveland. Okay. Where their arms tired. And they come here for a month at a time. Sometimes I always wanted to bring our cats, and they never do. Do they stay with you for a month at a time? No, they stay different places. But they've been recently getting a, an Airbnb at Palm Springs. Wow. I've never been to Palm Springs. Well, if you like cats, next time my parents are in town, bring yours. <laughs> I'll bring my cat to Palm Springs. I'll get to see, experience Palm Springs, finally meet your parents, uh -huh. <laughs> and hang out with a cat or two. Yeah. Wow. They don't lay low. They need you. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Helix. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Just go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is our best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. What's up, Tyso Goblins? It's your favorite guy from episode one, John DeWalt. And where am I? I'm on Rick's Patreon. And we're having a private VIP members only episode talking about all sorts of stuff, including Jimmy Kimmel and blackface. You're going to want to see this. It's, uh, it's But also let people know it's it, like it's as goofy, as fun as this is. And as much as we do talk about Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Um, we also like really get into like ideas and execution and we passion and, and like it's a real it's a serious conversation we talk about the serious so stuff if you too. want to be laughing a ton maybe this isn't your episode if you want real right. insider information with, with some laughs like the jimmy kimmel part 
Yeah, which I don't think is okay. No. But at least he didn't say jazz. We also do Biden and Trump j- impressions. What did it say? Jizz? Jams. Jams, right. <laughs> How in, when he was in blackface and black body, his still the jersey, it didn't say jazz because that might get him in trouble. And the 90s were fun. All right. Patreon.com slash uh, Tyson. Take, your take your shoes off. That's right. Um, so before we get into everything else that we'll get into, let's not bury the lead. Yeah. Your special is out. Yeah, it came out Monday. It's called Domestic Short Hair. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. I watched it for free. Did you really watch yeah, it? Of course. Whole thing? Whole thing. Oh, my God. Quiz me. 18th joke in. What is it? 18th joke in, I think, was the Girl Scout cookies. No, that was the second joke in, weirdly. Oh, man, but no, I, I'm, not really, I'm not really quizzing you on this. But, uh. Um, uh, and something that I was actually thinking about, because Tom Segura's special, at the beginning, he has a picture of him and Brad Pitt. It's not part of the special, oh. but it is part of his intro. And you... Let me hear the you. Yeah, and well, I was curious. spoiler alert. Um, I wasn't going to say which ones. Okay. Um, unless, should I not say that at all? I mean, it's a little bit of a surprise, but... Well, I don't want... Keep bleep out everything I said, but keep spoiler alert so okay. people know what the fuck was that. Okay. And then also, should we bleep out the stuff I said about Tom? No. Well, I, what, I, I don't want to bleep, bleep that stuff. I don't want to step on your toes, man. Buddy. It's my podcast. <laughs> it's your podcast. Okay. Let's keep going. We take our shoes off. So if we do step on toes, it doesn't hurt. Exactly. It's gentle. We'll bleep it. Well, I had a question for you. What's that? Um, We're going to bleep my question and the answer. Let me hear the you. But just know, if you want to know what we're talking about, you got to stick around to the end. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll talk about that for a second after. I have some curiosities about that. Okay. What made you go on All Things Comedy? Uh, actually, Ronnie Chang is on my socks. Like I knew, I knew about them, but I just didn't. You knew about all things. Yeah, yeah. I, I know Bill and Al Madrigal. And, yeah, uh, and Ronnie just was talking to him, and he's like, "Why don't you ask them to put your special out?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a good idea." So I texted Al Madrigal, and he said, "Yeah, let's do it." And that's kind of it. The tale as old as time. Right. A million dollars later, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Congrats! I could see the wallet. <laughs> um, they get my advertising, so I work with them, and I like oh, them do, very, very, very much. Oh yeah, they're nice to work with. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whenever anybody is starting a podcast or friends that don't know where to go, I always that's I go. All things comedy. Yeah. Love working with them. Yeah, they're good. You got a million bucks already, huh? <laughs> yes. Jesus Christ. How does it work like that? They just give it to me. Wired it to me. Is Al Madrigal doing that well? Uh uh yeah, he is. He, he came out he went out of pocket with the million. Good for him. <laughs> I was talking about I'd actually like to reach back out to him. I, I talked to him uh during the pandemic we were gonna do this, but neither one of us wanted to during the pandemic. But do, do what? Just to have him on as a guest. Oh, I okay. like Al very, very much. Yeah. Um, so you've been uh you've been around for a while, and this is my first our first time meeting. I know. And I feel a similar way, different reason, but similar way to when I first met Bobby Kelly, who I'd like been watching for uh-huh. a long time. And yeah. then I had him on the pod, and I'm excited that we might be friends. Yeah, he's super funny, Bobby Kelly. Well, how what 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 generation of comedians do you consider yourself to have come uh, up with? Bob Hope. <laughs> Bob Hope, Milton Berle. Is that true? I heard that was all a dream. <laughs> uh, who did I come up with? I mean, weirdly, in Florida, I started in Florida, and two people who I sort of were on were on the same scene as me were Larry the Cable Guy, before he was Larry the Cable Guy, and uh, Carrot Top. You know what's interesting? You're a dry man, uh-huh. and I am... A different kind of dry man. Right, and I don't get half your jokes. Is that what you're saying? I don't know yet. Is that what it is? I think I need to get into a groove and figure, oh, okay, I see what's going on with this guy. Right. <laughs> and I, doing stand-up, I've learned that there's ways of letting the audience in on things, but that's with bits. Mm-hmm. In real conversation, right, you don't know me, and I, like, know you. Yeah. So it's like, oh, but you don't, so I have to, like, ease in. Yeah. Okay. Should I start off by doing, like, real serious stuff? No, no, no. You don't, you don't have to, like, just be yourself, okay. and it's up to me to figure it out. Yeah. And if I hate it, I'll just storm out of here, man. Could you give me any examples of that? Of storming out of here? No, no. Of you meeting different types of comedians over time. And like, do you have any experience with like feeling out? Like, is that a conscious thing that you're able to do? 
feel out. I mean, I think I'm that way with everyone I talk to, but I mean, it just depends. Some people, most people, I kind of get them on some level at the beginning, but you know, some people are a little jokey, and then you have to go. Okay, I see what I see. What's going on here? Are you not jokey? Oh, I'm very jokey, as despite what you've seen so far. I I heard a little judgment in the. Some people are a bit jokey. And some people are not highbrow like I am. That's what I meant to say. Right. <laughs> Right, with your, I have a million dollars in here. Yeah, yeah. You're a jokey guy. And what, you mean? Like your comedy is, you're, you're, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. you're joke, 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 joke. Yeah, except for my crowd work special, but. um, You did a little bit of crowd work in this. I did a little bit, yeah. That was a bit deconstructive. Yeah, I kept, I kept it to a minimum. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about it, but I don't know what's considered spoilers now. Just talk about whatever, and if they get spoiled, they get spoiled. It's still, <laughs> there's going to be plenty that they won't get spoiled. Um. I watched uh, this at uh, the second that I think crowd work thing that you did uh, and you felt it went flat and you're like, well, we'll edit that out. And then right away you got a big laugh on it and you said, we'll keep it in. Uh huh. My thoughts on that were you being very stream of consciousness and like self-aware. Yeah. Um, which, and I could be uh, observing this wrong. I feel like your joke structure isn't typically that. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, that's interesting that, like, I don't see you do that kind of stuff. Do what kind of stuff? Deconstructing jokes. Oh, just sort of monitoring what I'm doing on stage? Yeah. yeah. Like, I like that a lot. I do. I mean, I'll do it if, uh, I mean, sometimes if a joke is new and it's not working, I'll point out that it's new and make a little goofy remark about it. Uh, I don't know if you could tell that was a new one. The one that didn't work at all, that was a new one. But you, you're you very, uh, it seems like you're very intentional with everything you do. Uh, I mean, my I like the way I like to do it is I like to keep my jokes tight and my performance looser than that. Keep my jokes looser. tight. Like I want tightly written jokes where I'm not rambling and every word needs to be there. And, you know... I hit, hit beats and just like boom, boom, boom. I mean, even though I don't have a boom, boom, boom style, mm -hmm. I'm boom, boom, boom in my own way. Have you thought about um, merch that says tight jokes, loose performance? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, nah, that could be misconstrued probably. Yeah, I guess. I went to school with a misconstrued actually and people used to make fun of the, the play on words. And then she got married and it was Mrs. Construed and everybody just, you know, <laughs> didn't understand. <laughs> I got it. Nice. Todd, I want to I want to reference the vibe. Okay. For me. Okay. I have been doing podcasting since you were probably 4 years younger than this. And I have weaved in and out and noticed certain things and then when I look back I'm like, "Ooh, I would have wanted to have done this or tried this." Uh -huh. And I'm now at the point Have you ever been dreaming and you know it's a dream? Oh yeah. What do you do in that moment? That's very frustrating because then you just kind of, I try to force myself to wake up. Whoa, dude. I try to do everything I can to stay in this world where I could fly. Oh, really? That's interesting. Well, I never have good dreams though. But when you know you're in it, mm -hmm. you could change things. Um, I guess I've never felt that much control, but I mean, you, I have had dreams where I'm like, I'm no, I'm sleeping, but, and then I kind of just push myself out of it and I wake up. So you're My dreaming that you're sleeping. What a boring dream. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I wish they were, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the ultimate boring dream. Yeah, I, I just want to go to sleep, relax, and just go into my dream world where I'm asleep. I mean, it doesn't happen often, but I it does happen. Well, the the uh, analogy was, here I am, podcast being the dream, waking up as podcast over and thinking about what could I have done in that dream different? And here I am feeling out like, are you okay with burping? That's weird. Uh, if you want to. I could have swallowed it. <laughs> you got it. My grandpa, before he passed, uh -huh. used to say it's better to belch and bear the shame than not to belch and bear the pain. Really? And I have a big thing. If it rhymes, I'm at least going to consider it. I've never held back a burp and felt pain, though. Have you? Oh, yeah. What? Really? What kind? Well, first of all, I do think it's a metaphor. Yeah. Like, re like speak your truth, release what you need to, oh, okay. show up authentically, and don't, it, instead of hurting yourself, Worrying about shame of how other people receive yeah, it. But also... On that level, I like that. Farts are, I guess, right You know, after burps. You probably held in a fart. Uh, yeah. Spoiler uh, alert. Spoiler Sorry. alert, I know. Um, but uh, I, I want to... I feel myself wanting to get really silly. 
Get silly. Well, you've already just you said fart less than thirty seconds ago. That's not silly. What do you want to do? If you think farting is silly, then I want to go through the <laughs> farting roof, dude. <laughs> um, well, I've been limiting my coffee. Uh huh. And now I'm drinking it like for pot, and it's getting me fucking juice. Yeah, I, I turned down your caffeine offer because I I had one and a half. One and a half coffees? I had an espresso and ice. Then I went back to the same place and had another. Half? Well, I started sipping. I go, I didn't even want this. And then I dumped it. Why'd you do it? Did you like the transaction? I just like the, I, sometimes I like the idea of a second coffee, but I don't really want a second coffee and it's not really good for me. I have a fun conversation. I want to shine a magnifying glass on. Okay. When we like the idea of something, even though we don't want it. Right. Do we really not want it? Are we romanticizing the idea? Like, I like going to get a coffee. I can have coffee here, but I'll still go walk and get it because I like the walking. How you doing? Let me uh -huh. get the thing. Like, normally I don't like that kind of small talk, but I, in coffee, I feel like it's it's a it's a thing. It's a routine, I guess. I don't even need the coffee. I have one. Yeah. But you went. You didn't even want it. Um. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I just kind of was like, oh, I like, I'll go. To, I mean, I've gone to coffee shops three times in one day. Bullshit. That's, I know. That sounds like really dropped a bomb on you. Bullshit. Seriously. And then have you gotten a coffee every time? You know what I like to do? This, if, if we want to get real boring here. I Spoiler like to, alert. <laughs> I like to do the coffee in the morning, herbal iced tea for the second round. Like a nice hibiscus iced tea. Yeah? You wake? Yeah, I was just thinking about. It. I also went to school with a Mr. Biscus, and every time we would say hello to him, people would say hi, Biscus. Oh my God, how are you on puns? <laughs> I have, I feel like I have no choice but to like them tonight, today. Okay, burn me. Uh, <laughs> I feel like puns are the bridge into silly. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm holding on, I'm holding on, and it's like you do some puns, and if the if 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 they're punning back. Uh huh. But I had uh, Tom Segur on recently. Yes. And I don't. Um, I had never met Tom before then. Uh. And that was that was uh, where I was like, I want to get silly, but I'm not feeling silly chemistry. Yeah. And then afterwards, I'm like, fucking at least acknowledge the silly. Right. So th that's where I'm at. Did he not? Yeah, I don't know Tom well either, so I don't know how silly he gets. But well, I mean, he gets like, he, he yeah, he could get not the same kind. He gets animated and uh -huh. graphic and like, like he's his he's funny with like he gets like dirty with shit. Pull your cans out and stick them in my mouth hole whenever you want. Uh -huh. You know, he I, he said fart a couple of times. Really? Yeah. I don't think I said it once. I think I quoted you saying it. Yeah. But podcasting is like, sometimes you got to get silly. Get silly, man. All right. Thank you. What is that? Are you going to put on a um. <laughs> Sorry, man. It's just got to give the fans what they want. Uh, oh, my God. You, you're ready for this. Yeah. Hey, would you mind putting on an eyebrow? Oh, the sticky's gone. Yeah. Do you mind putting this on? What is that? A wig? Ugh. Uh, is this a wig? No, but uh, you could put it on as a wig. Right. It's nor it's meant to put under a table in case it's wobbly. Seriously? No, Todd Barry. <laughs> that seems. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I have a thing about wobbly tables, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah, over the headphones. <laughs> Yeah, let's just do it, though. Let's do it this way. I'll hold it. You know what? Thanks for yes ending enough. That'll do. What's your thing on wobbly tables? I just say I, I will always have them fix that when I'm at a restaurant. I will always fix it. Or I'll fix it myself, yeah. How do you fix it or how do you have them fix it? Well, ideally, they have these little wobble wedges. I'm going to interrupt. Would you do this as if it's a stand-up joke? Okay. Thanks. Oh, do you want me to talk to you now like I'm doing a stand-up joke? Yeah. We'll, we'll put a spotlight on you. Okay. Yep. Spotlight on you. We'll put a little reverb in. I, uh, hey, everyone. Nice to be here. I hate wobbly tables uh, at restaurants. And I guess when I'm not at a restaurant, any situation where I have a wobbly table, I, I'll either fix it myself, or, but usually I'll ask them to fix it. And then uh, ideally they won't just use napkins, but they'll have these wobble wedges that are made specifically uh, for I that. Those. I don't have a punchline for this. I know you told me to do this like a stand-up. Uh, I like how the way you did it like a stand-up was just saying, hello, everybody, and yeah, then just no, talking. I, I've never had someone to put me on the spot like that. I, I have a device that I've been talking about for years that I haven't done yet that I want to do on this podcast, which is I want to get a microphone, like a proper stand-up microphone and stand just to be there. 
uh, right in front of the curtain. Uh-huh. And then whenever, if you're, if the, my guest or I is feeling like in a pocket about something, you could stand up and just do it as stand up. Oh, I see what you're saying. Or say, do it as a stand up, like as a challenge. And right. you have to go up there and do it as stand up. I definitely think that's a fun thing to do for a live, like doing the podcast live to have that stand up element involved. I think the problem was the thing I was saying was kind of boring. So to say that should be stand up is. Uh... Well, all you have to do is, is, I mean, I've, I've, I've been studying comedy uh-huh. and I've learned some of the devices and I could, okay. I could, and I could maybe tell you, and then you could try him with that. Okay. So the first thing is you want to get people to kind of picture where you are. So you go, so there I was, right. And then you say where you were. Uh-huh. And then you want to kind of like when you're reading a new script and it says Todd Berry and then in parentheses it says things about you. So you go, so there I was, right? I'm at a restaurant and you know me and then you say something about you. Does that make sense so far? Okay. And then whenever you introduce a new person, you have to give something about them. So the waiter comes over and you know waiters, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So And that kind of dance. Okay. Could, could you try it that way? So, so oh, there I, to, okay, we're, So there I was, you explain who you were. And you, uh, and you know me, you explain about you. And every time you introduce a new person, you say, and you know them. And then every now and then go, you know. <laughs> I feel like this is kind of half fun and half abuse, but I'll do it. As long as you recognize some of it as abuse, <laughs> I'm on board. Uh, yeah, so I go to restaurants quite a bit. You know me. I'm so always eating first, first, so there I am. What's that? First, you have to say, so there I am at the restaurant. I have to say it like that? Because when you say I'm going to restaurants, people are hearing a story. When you say there I am, they're now there with you. I would argue they, you'd have to bring them somewhere, but I don't think they're going to know where to be if I just said Leave there in the I comments. Am. Let me know if you notice a difference <laughs> when he says I'm at the, I was at a restaurant versus the, so there I am. But humor uh, me. Just the, all right. I'll, I'll humor you. Okay. I'll do what you, you want me to do. Thank you. Uh, so there I am. At the, at the restaurant. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know the restaurant I'm talking about. Which restaurant? Oh, I thought you knew because I said, there I am. and you. Oh, no, your, I was your just excited. Eyes, like your I eyes was, lit up. Because I felt like I was there with you. Okay. So there I am at the restaurant. And uh, I sit down because, you know, the me, I sit down at restaurants. <laughs> okay. Then the first thing I do, you know, me, is I check to see if the table's wobbly. Right. Because that'll drive me crazy. If You know me, it'll drive me crazy if it's wobbling. So then I have to like take a deep breath. You know me, I always take a deep breath. Oh, you're, you're really doing a lot of you know me's. I thought that's, I thought that's what I'm supposed to Just do. Just you know me and then you give all, instead of you know me each individual time, you know me. I love sitting down, hate wobbly tables. Okay. Hate playing, so can, hate playing this game with Rick. So I could do this like as like an umbrella. Yes. And then once we've established that, now we know you. We're okay. moving on. And then we want to introduce other people. So, the, you know, the waiters there, you know waiters. So the waiter, you know, you know the way waiters are at restaurants. And uh, you do know that. <laughs> you got to tell us. They're there and they walk over and they say hi. And the first thing I'll say is hi. <laughs> yes. And then I'll say, hey, um... This table's kind of wobbly. Is there any way you could fix it? And you know the waiter. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, whatever. Sure. I'll, I'll take care of it when I have the time. Yeah. I've not, no, I've not, I've never had a, re- oh. Oh, in New sorry. York, that's how they do it. No, hey, I, listen, buddy, I'll take, it, I'll take care of it when I got the time. Yeah. And then they hit you, right? Yeah. And he's fucking coward. Yeah. Cause New Yorkers are mean. But they keep it real. That's the main difference between New York and LA. LA, they're nice in front of you, but they'll stab you in the back. But New York, they'll suck your dick and they'll fuck you in the ass, but they'll do it honestly. Wow. Um, wow. Do you think you want to stay with me for at least an hour? I feel like I have already. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Listen. Uh, do you want me to finish this joke? <laughs> Oh, okay. Apparently everyone else does. Okay. Let's so do there it. I am, and I'm in the restaurant, and you know me at the restaurant. Waiter comes by, the way they come by, you know the way waiter comes by, <laughs> okay. and they say, hey, how's it going? Can I get you something to drink? Yeah, um, but before we do that, I wouldn't say, but before we do that. Yeah, but I, this table's kind of a little wobbly, and I probably would just leave it at that. I wouldn't say, can you fix it? Because I'm basically, you know me, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm passive-aggressively like, getting them. And them. that's why the you know me is important because now I understand why you're not. So you would like an hour of stand up where almost every 30 seconds the comic says, you know me? No, no, no. But when we're getting to know you yeah. at the beginning, I open every set. First, I go, how's everybody doing? Oh, and I then I feel like they could have done better. So I say, come on, you could do better than that. Then once they get louder, I go, whoa, 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 where'd that come from? 
Sometimes, depending how long my set is, I'll separate the crowd into men and women and do a little friendly competition. Oh my god! Sometimes I'll even rate how loud it gets by making like a kind of meter like this. Uh-huh. Rarely does it happen, but when it goes crazy, I'll, I, it goes further than I even. Then I'll ask any birthdays and anniversary stuff like that. Are you hosting? Are you like emceeing, or is this your during no, regular? This is my set, and then regular set. Uh, then I'll be. Uh, it's good to be here, or if I've done it before, it's good to be back. Uh-huh. Then I get right fucking into it. All right. So I just, you know, maybe I drove here. I Ubered here. However I got there, I explain how tired my arms are. And then I go, and you know me, and I'll give them a little bit of information that might be relevant to the next, you know, for the rest of the set. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But saying you know me almost implies that you don't need to tell them anything. And that's the trick. That's the trick. Stanley Kubrick says, when given the opportunity, I like the audience to figure something out instead of me showing it to them. So if they believe that they're figuring something out as opposed to being spoon fed, they now then believe they are in on something, which is why the audience loves crowd work so much. It's why they love callbacks like, oh, like they get it. I get it. So it's a bit manipulative, but it is sometimes beneficial to let the audience think that they discovered it. But the truth is, I don't make the choices. I just lay down the options. Right. We'll be right back. (laughs) And we're back. Uh, Wow. Do you think... could you be very honest with me? Yeah. Do you I, think if I you could, I could try? Okay. I'm not saying that you have to come over for dinner twice a week. Uh huh. But after this, when we see each other out in passing, should I lay low, or do you think you could? We could be like, "What's up?" Oh, we could definitely be what's up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've ever bombed on that, the podcast. Not much more than that. <laughs> definitely be. I if you said what's up to me, I'd definitely go, "Hey, what's up?" Nice. What if I said, you want to get an herbal tea? You want to say hi to my buddy Biscus? Uh, I'd probably say, no, I'm good. Okay. Can I introduce you to my old uh, math teacher, Construe? Sarah Construe? <laughs> wow, you remember all these, man. Buddy, if I could say one thing, I would. But unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> Todd Berry, if I've said it once, I've said it twice. Funny stuff. Hi, my name is Rick Glassman, and this episode is sponsored by Helix Sleep. If you're new to the podcast, then you don't know about this. If you've watched a few episodes, you know that I love my sleep and I love to have my sleep on a Helix. Here's the deal. I got my parents a Helix sleep mattress. Oh, excuse me. I got them too because they needed another one for the guest room. Cousin Teddy got a Helix. My aunt got a Helix. We're a Helix family and here's why. You could go on their website, take a sleep quiz, answer these questions. I think they have 20 different mattresses. They have the award-winning Lux collection. Now I know that means nothing to you, but at full disclosure, we use the Lux collection in our family, okay? Helix is so confident that you're gonna like their mattress, they offer a 20-day risk-free trial. Psych, 100 days, that's more than three months. Try the mattress for 100 days. Try it for 99, if you don't like it, send it back. Oh, by the way, they also have a 10 to 15 year warranty. <laughs> Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. With Go ahead. Go ahead. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. Helix Sleep, with Helix Sleep, better sleep starts now. And hey, I don't have a Helix mattress and I sleep like shit. (laughs) We gotta get you a Helix. (laughs) Do you want a Helix? A good buddy of mine from Cleveland wrote a movie that came out in select theaters last Friday and is on all VOD streaming platforms now. This isn't just a friend of mine. He also used to babysit me, and he was the first person who I ever saw beat Mario 2. To this day, I only know two people who have ever beat Mario 2. Him and me. I'm going to show you a 15-second trailer. The movie came out in select theaters last Friday, and it's on all streaming VOD platforms now. Please enjoy the trailer of The Re-Education of Molly Singer. My son is a recluse. I would like to hire you to take him under your wing. We have until homecoming to get this kid from zero to hero. I am paying you to help my son get adjusted to college, not ruin his life. And we're back. I'm feeling silly. (laughs) Gulp, 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 gulp. Todd, I'm feeling real silly. Yeah? You want to tell me anything? Uh, No, I I guess, uh, no, I'm just, I'm rolling with this. So there's two main types of podcasts, in my opinion. Uh-huh. There's, there's conversational and interview. And okay. there's, there's different versions of all of those. Conversational could be just casual. It could be a lot of play and games. Yeah. And interview is more getting to know and uh, just kind of more question answer. Uh-huh. I could do that. 
this is I have this gift. Right. I don't like doing that enough right. because you know if I had TJ Stansberry on the podcast, for example, mm -hmm. you know TJ Stansberry. I'm sure you know, he's always doing his thing. I'm not sure who that is, actually. But I got your interest, didn't I, when I said you know T.J. Well, I Stansberry. just had this little panic where, like, oh, I'm supposed to know who this person is. No, I made that name up. Oh, okay. But gotcha. I was just making a point that when you say, now you know T.J. Sainsbury, now you're invested. You're yeah. like, I have to know who that is. Right. Tell me. Right. A lot of people do references that I don't know a lot. People be like, well, yeah, what am I fucking, Bill Bartholomew? I, I, I drove to school. And like people are laughing and I'm thinking, who the fuck is Bill Bartholomew? Yeah. And then I realized if I don't know who Bill Bartholomew is, at least 30% of these people don't. And they're laughing because they think they're supposed to. Right. That's that's my niche. Is getting people to laugh just because they think they're supposed to? No, the people that don't know stuff, but they're okay with not knowing it. Oh, okay. I like, you know what I like? I like when people go, who's Bill Bartholomew? Yeah, I mean, I did that with T. There is there are times when you talk to someone and they bring someone up and you're like, should I acknowledge I don't know who that is? Or is it like the most important per person in history and I'm supposed to know that? But if I didn't say, now you know, you know, whoever the fuck I said, TJ Spinster or something, would you have asked? I mean, I might be courageous enough to go, although you said you know, I actually don't know. Right. Now back to the courage. All right. You tell the waiter. Oh, okay. No, so you have... Spoiler alert, special. You had mentioned that uh, girlfriend, may I? Yeah. Tell me after bleep. Okay. Girlfriend doesn't like, I won't say what all the thing is. So something a girlfriend didn't like. Yeah. Um, but she told you indirectly. Yeah. And then you said, you made a joke back by indirectly telling her you like to be spoken to directly. Yeah. Right. I connect to this. Incidentally, when you're talking to the waiter, maybe you would reference the wobbly table, but not say anything else, which is indirectly asking them. The reason you wouldn't ask them is that, a lack of courage? I, well, I also, I feel like it's obvious if I say this table's wobbly, it's obvious that I don't want it to be wobbly. But do you so think that be, somebody who has so much going on in their day, they're going to clock that? Yeah, I think they deal with that all the time. Okay. And I'm very polite about it. I'm not I like, believe that. I'm, and I'll fix it myself sometimes also. But What will you do to fix it? Napkins? Napkins. Coasters? Coasters. Yeah, I don't travel with wobble wedges. We should see if we could get Wobble Wedges to sponsor this episode. Oh, my God. Uh, you yeah, know, are they are they chewable Wobble Wedges? Cause then <laughs> Tell me the difference between chewable and not chewable. I'm missing that joke. Uh, it's a, a blue chew reference. There's uh, he's sponsoring a lot of podcasts. Gotcha. Uh, uh, sorry, that joke was hard to get. There you go. Okay. There you Crossing go. Crossing that pun bridge. Boom. Having fun. Man, that was just, I handed that one to you. That was great. That's why I miss improv, dude. Were you a big improv guy? You tell me. Pulls out wigs and mustaches. Yeah, I know. Uh, sure you do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was a big improv guy. Um, <laughs> let me give you a suggestion. You should try it. But uh, I stopped <laughs> doing it as much because it. I had to pick between stand-up and improv. And improv, I had to rely on other people to show up. Mm -hmm. And stand-up, I could just perform in my living room. Yeah. Or, you know, open mics. Do you go on tour? Just started doing it again for the first time since COVID. Okay. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, I am, I have only one show confirmed right now at the end of the month in Brooklyn at Union Hall. Oh, that's a good place, Union Hall. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't have an agent. Uh, and I still don't know if technically I do, but I have an agent friend and I'm like, How, I th what do you mean you don't know if you have an agent or not? Well, I got rid of my agents, uh, a bit ago. I don't have agents. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, uh, I've been having comedy clubs reaching out to me on Instagram to do shows. And I've been doing it every now and then. But I realized I don't want to be doing this. No. I don't want to do any of this negotiation. And also, I don't know what this venue. And I'm asking my friends, how are these places? And I'm, Yeah. Um, so I have a friend who is a stand-up agent. And uh, I'm like, I think I want to do this. I think. You think you want to tour? Or you think you want to have I an agent? I hate traveling. Do you? I hate it. Hate it. For OCD reasons, or I, I don't think that helps. Uh huh. Um, do you hate every second of it, or did you hate like the airport and going to security? I hate packing and I hate uh -huh. being away from all of my stuff. So I end up packing way too many things. Yeah, I do that too. Um, I pack like I'm going to shit my pants twice a day, <laughs> and I also, <laughs> also, um, I'm doing spots in LA all the time. Yeah. It's 20 minutes. I do different 20 minutes, but I'm, I realized I want to 
record a special, what would I do? I haven't practiced enough doing proper, right? you know, an hour. Uh, so I'm like, I have to do this. But the only reason I'm doing it is because I want to do the special. I don't get this crazy high getting off stage. I don't like, ooh, I want to fucking do this. The food and blah, blah, blah is fucking delicious, dude. So what you're saying is you want a special, but you don't actually like being a comedian. No, <laughs> no. I don't like what I don't I don't enjoy what being a comedian takes. Do you like being on stage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love being on stage. But I don't love Dennis, did you watch The Last Dance? Uh the Michael Jordan documentary? No, I heard it's great though. Do you mind? I don't know how much time you have. Could we put it on and, and then we'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, Dennis Rodman says, they don't pay us to play ball. They play us for everything in between. I'm like, damn, I get that as a basketball player. Right. I, mean, I don't see how that translates to comedy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really. No, I, there's so much. About I think what he was saying with that perhaps is I would do this for free, but it, I don't want to be traveling all the time because that's yeah, I was making that's it, where I want the money. I was making a joke. I do think it translates to comedy. It's why I brought oh, it up. Okay. Yeah, it's it's all the in-betweens. It's the packing. It's the traveling. The interactions I have, by the way, and I meet people before and after shows, preferably after. And I love people that come to my shows and watch because they already know my things. Yeah. But like, and I love that they want to take pictures and meet. And also a lot of times they'll take pics and like, don't worry, I won't put my arm around you. Like I, they know those things, but it's still, it's still, I feel like I have, it's very draining for me. And I feel like I have to either put a mask on or I might not be a good sport to my fans. Uh -huh. um, and it's hard. I also hate doing a second show in one night. Oh, I, I do too, actually. Yeah? I hate it. I noticed you referenced great 7 o'clock show for your taping. Was it only one show? No, I did too. Hey, I, I, do, I do a good job for the second show, but I never... Will you explain this to me? What? What you hate about it and why? For me, I like... You got the day of show. Pardon me. Good to go. You got the day of show. You got your before the show. You got your show. <laughs> and then you have the after show, mm -hmm. which is going to get some need or something. But starting up, you know, having to start over again uh -huh. on that second show. And also, like in comedy clubs, they often just do routinely do a second show, yep. whether there's demand or not. Like I'm much more inclined to do it if it's either a really small place or if they're like, hey, we have to add a second show because this first one sold out. Yeah. But like, I don't want to do like 80 people on the first show and 25 on the second show. You'd rather do 105 on show. I'd rather one. do 105 on show one and be done. And you've been doing this for a while and it hasn't, hasn't changed for you. Has, what? The second show? You're like, if so, meaning if you had your druthers and I never know if I'm using this right. I'm assuming you have your druthers on this. Yeah. If you did, then you would just one show. Yeah. But you still do a second show. I rarely, do, I don't always do. I don't, for the most part, I just do one show. But I do occasionally. I have things on the books now where I'm doing two. I believe that if I knew that I could only, if like I'm only doing one show, I think that would change so much for me. Why don't you just say I don't want to do one show? Well, I might. So, so I am picking, I'm doing a small amount of touring shows now to kind of feel out what's my draw like, how is this going to do and what kind of demand do I have to allow me what I need to feel safe, which is I want to do one show. Sometimes I'll do two, but I want to do one and I need to travel. I'm very high maintenance. You need a what? I need to travel in a certain way i need certain hotels so you're gonna go do are you gonna fly first class to new york for yeah. union hall yeah. I'll, I'll break even you i don't think you'll even break even um place, yeah place seats 100 people yeah but s the sellout is a decent it's still a decent price yeah no they're very generous there but still yeah oh i know i just sold out the, the first show so are I you know doing it early and a late no, I said I only oh, so want to do one and then two and two nights. I'm, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I, though I had the option of early late. That's why I'm like, no, I, I, the only way I would do that, and I've thought about this, is if I could build that saying to people, hey, first show is going to be m a lot of material and the second show is going to be bad. That's going to, oh, okay. I was going to say if you did like improv one show and, and that's what it would be. Yeah. But it's not going to be. So like I want to make the second show tickets cheaper and just be like, hey, Come to the first show. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Maybe you want to come to the second show to see what it could look like if I wasn't good. It's always weird when people come up to come to see more than one show. I've had people see me like four times in a weekend and it's like, all right, if you want to do that. Cabinet makers. That's what we call them in the biz. Cabinet makers? Yeah. They tend to come multiple times. It's a reference to your special. Oh, the, oh, the cabinet salesman. Sorry. Okay. I didn't get the reference. 
because you misquoted. Well, you you didn't get the reference as well. We're ben, you were bringing up all my high school teachers. <laughs> you must have well, Mr. Quoted. <laughs> Do you uh, not like when people come to another show because you think they saw this already? There's a little of that, and there's a little of, yeah. There, it is kind of that because it's just kind of like the shine's going to go off it a little oh. bit. It's like yeah, there's going to be some things repeated, and I don't know why you'd want to hear. It. I mean, I, there's different things in every one of my shows, but at the same time. It ain't a hundred percent new each time, uh-huh. and which it shouldn't be. But, but if they know, and by the way, I'm playing devil's advocate because I feel the same exact way. But if they know, hey, I want to see him again. I liked it so much. I want to see him again. They're expecting to see. It yeah, again. I mean, it's also a thing where, like, all right, people are different. It's not something I would do, but you know, I've had them show up, and they don't. They're not stalkery. They're not weirdos. They're just like, all right, that's. I don't even like my girlfriend coming to my shows because you've already seen it a few times. I, I, you've seen it. Yeah. It makes me uncomfortable. It's good to to show your partner like a few kills. I also like I also want them to see a bad one, like a real fun. You want them to or you to know see they where will. things get well, I guess that's inevitable also. But but yeah, I mean my girlfriend's come see me a lot, but there is times where you're like, Oh man, that must be kind of work sitting through that. I say if somebody who I am like self conscious about like them seeing because it's it's this is part of our identity. And uh-huh. like, I want them to re- respect what I do, at least the way that I do. I go, if you're going to come to one show, you have to come to five. <laughs> I want you to see, uh, make a sample of it. And then don't maybe come twice a year after that. Wow. I don't really enforce that. Yeah, but yeah. like just speaking candidly, that is, I don't like thinking about knowing who is in the audience. Well, the worst thing, I mean, I don't know if, when I when someone's I know someone and I forget to tell them don't sit up front, mm-hmm. and you, I walked out and you're like front row. There's you're like I, you can't sit up front. Do you ever make you see somebody up front that you know and you go I'm sorry you have to go. To no, I won't. I won't take it that far, but I will be like the show is ruined for me. Right. Here's a PSA to people who are going to see somebody that that person knows you. Don't sit in the first four rows. Oh, don't even sit in the first 10 rows. Sit in the back. Could you see five rows, eight rows deep? Maybe. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's easier to ignore them if they're like a little off to the side. Right. Maybe at least eight rows in. When I see somebody that I know and I didn't even know they were going to be there and I get on stage and I see them, I have to acknowledge it, but I don't want to have to make bits out of it. So I'll do this. And while I'm talking, I'll go and then I'll continue. I send my hello. I give a little wave. A little wave to your. A little wave to who it is. I see you. Was it it's uncomfortable, it? though, because if you make eye contact with them, then they're like, <laughs> they have to give you a smile. And then you're like, maybe you're laughing because I'm making eye contact with you and you know that we're going to be going to get some food later. Don't you feel that about everybody who's laughing at you in the audience? They, I mean, I know whenever anybody laughs at me, I just think, I think you're just being nice. Oh, no, I don't think that. Nice. I think they're laughing at the great, amazing comedy I'm doing. So you get the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 um, I, I do you. Do you feel that when people come to see you, because when people come to see you, they're coming to see you, not a yeah, comedy show right. necessarily. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know, know what you, right? you mean. And uh, do you feel a sense of obligation to them? Yeah. I mean, and I try to remind myself, like, you know, if I'm just in a pissy mood or whatever, like, are these people like hired babysitters? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I imagine the conversation of like, hey, should we get tickets to this? And then they, they make arrangements. They go, you know, do get dinner before. So it's kind of, they're putting some effort into it. And yeah, that's, you got to give them a good show. That's the Kobe Bryant mentality. Yeah. And you'd say, you know, when he's, whatever is the game and he's not feeling it, or he, if like, instead of taking a day off, like he would never want to do that, even when he's hurt. He said that like, there's somebody who's coming to this game. It's the first time they've always wanted to see me. Yeah. You're like the Kobe Bryant. of. But also, comedy. why would you want, why would you want to do it any other way? Why would you want to be like, I want to, I want to phone it in tonight. I don't think it's a conscious decision to phone anything in, but like some days you're just not feeling funny. Yeah. No, it definitely shows they're more fun than others. Yeah. Did you ever used to think that you needed to get up a certain amount of times? Uh, I mean, in New York, that's kind of drilled into you a little bit. And I kind of agree with it on some level, but uh, yeah, I, I think you do need to, because It's good. I shouldn't say the same thing. I shouldn't. I shouldn't assume everyone has to do it the same way. But there's a big difference between someone who's going on six times a week and someone who's going to go on once a week. 
Sure. I mean, the person doing it six times could be just in, innately not good, and so they're just doing shitty material yep. a lot more than the other guy, but do you see what I'm saying? Yes. I ask every guest this. How many sexual partners have you ever had? Oh, God. Don't, don't ask that. Would you, if the number was revealed, would people think that's high, that's low, or that's about right? They'd be stunned. For which reason? <laughs> I don't want to talk about this. Okay. Well, then what else do we talk about? Um, if you're not going to tell me how many sexual partners you have, but you will tell me how much money you have. Oh, I, I, I jokingly told you how much money I have. So you don't have a million dollars? I don't have a million dollars in my wallet, like I said. Who do you think, if you had to pick, has had the most sexual partners of any stand-up comedian friend of yours? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I'd have to think about that. The only time I've made you laugh is, it, is when I've actually just made you uncomfortable. Yeah, that's question. true. You're, yeah. So if I ever did a stand-up show and I saw you in the front and I no clocked you, you probably wouldn't feel obligated to give me anything. Um. Well, I mean, we're making a big leap here to where I'm love a big leap paying money to see you. It's a good show if you go no, to the first good. one. Yeah, it is. I would definitely. I'm sure it's a good show, but the idea that I, after what all I just said that I would sit up front. Was, right. What about when you're with? What about when you when people want to come to your show and you either drive them there, like, hey, can I come with you? Or like you guys go together. That happens sometimes, right? No. Really? Never? Well, I'm usually in New York. I'm walking to my shows. Right. Right. And the only person I would bring is my girlfriend. And occasionally maybe I've brought friends, but for the most part. What about when people say they're going to go and you get them tickets? What about that? Okay. This happens. Yeah. Do yeah. you feel an obligation to like host them? How you doing? Check in with them? That stuff? No, not really. I mean... No, I don't like double. Hey, did you get in all right? I guess I might sometimes, but for the most part, they're going to get in all right. Yeah. It's not a big, it's not really hard to get into one of my shows. It's not what I hear. I mean, it's hard to get tickets because they sell out like seconds. Zoom in on the wallet. <laughs> okay. You have animation on your show? Wow. Yeah. What's the budge on this one? A lot of people think it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I have change falling on the table. <laughs> Uh, the the budget is is um is uh that's personal. Oh, I'd rather tell you, you how many partners I've had. All right, all right, you can tell gulp, me. Gulp, gulp, gulp. You sitting down? <laughs> I was twelve when I when the first <laughs> I lost my virginity. Um, to a substitute teacher, she wasn't my teacher. She was a substitute teacher. Una maestra qué? Uh, she was she was seventeen. It was legal. Point. Don't need to get into this. Point is, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm starting so early. I want to see if I could get to 10 before I could drive. And before I was 16, I had 55 girls, for real. I know this is embarrassing, I'm making myself look so bad. And it was a competition with myself, and there's no disrespect to anybody, and a, and a lot of them, actually a, an amazing pickup line that I would use is, I'm trying to get to whatever the number is, would you help me be my, and then I would pretend that they were the last one. And then I would, I ended up f***ing so many girls. Anyway, I got to, I, I then, my second goal was I wanted to get to 100 before I graduated. And I was at 99, and the night before graduation, the night before graduation, I, um, uh, Sarah Totenbaum. Uh, I f***ed Sarah Totenbaum, and it was the 100th girl, and I told her, you'll be my 100th. She said, I bet you use that all, what's funny is she said, I bet you use that all the time, and I did use that all the time, <laughs> but this was literally my 100th. And then I, I was, uh, I was 17, I f***ed my 100th girl on June 7th, 2002, right before graduation. I f***ed 100 girls. <laughs> I've only had 118, I've only had 18 since. Um, random and, and stuff. <laughs> but I, I usually will only sleep with someone and, and go down on them and have them go down on me if I kind of like them and get to know them. And if they uh, play the music for a second. Uh, also, if I were to ever play the music right now, if I were to ever go inside of a. <laughs> That's only because if I fall in love. <laughs> it's just a regular amount. Okay. We don't have to talk about this. Yeah. Let's talk thing. about comedy. Well, you know, a lot of people uh -huh. argue, argue is a nice word, throw a fucking fit when they watch comedy podcasts and like all oh, these fucking cock fucking losers, all they talk about is stand up. Why don't they talk about pottery? Why don't they talk about Are there clothes? people who complain that? Oh, yeah. I tend to not talk about stand up too much unless it's somebody who uh, 
maybe if it's somebody who I like, it's my first conversation with them and I know of their stand up, then I am genuinely interested in their take on it. But I do know a lot of comedy podcasts kind of surround or sur- are surrounded by like, this is what I did. This is how I do it. This is the craft. Mm-hmm. And like, I am, if I'm genuinely interested, which I am, I will ask it. But I also then sometimes become a little bit sensitive to like, okay, let's, you know, Let's get into some other stuff. I do love talking about shit other than comedy. Me too. I like to talk about food and things like that. Yeah. And I like when someone who's interviewing me, like a normal interview, not this, not a podcast. By normal, you mean traditional? Traditional. That's what I, that's a better way of phrasing it. Thank you. Um, Yeah. I love it if they just ask me mundane questions. What are your general food modifications when you go to a restaurant and you don't like the way they make it? Is that a real question? Yeah. What do you mean general food modifications? Um, I have an Instagram account called Jumods, and I take a screen grab of all the orders I make with like no butter on the bun. Oh, really? Side, all these things. Yeah. Are you somebody that goes someplace and I'll have the blank and take it as it is? Uh, I will often make, I try not to, I mean, there's some restaurants where you can do that. And there's some fancier ones where like you're getting what we give you. You'd be surprised at what you could do at a fancy restaurant. Yeah. With I a mean, little bit of gumption. Yeah, no. uh, I know. Or if you say you're allergic. Yeah. And also you show your palms and squint your eyes and before you do it, go, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is it? And then they go, it's okay, what's going on? You want me to fix your table? I was once with dining with some people and they were all like that. We're like, hey, hey, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the guy's like, I'm here to serve you. You don't have to keep apologizing. Love that. I was kind of impressed by that. I actually typically try not to say sorry too much unless I genuinely am. Yeah. And this is something I think women should learn. I've uh, cut down on my sorries also. Mm -hmm. You know what I do? I say thank you. Thank you? Yeah. Thank you for letting me hurt your feelings, like something like that. Um, Thanks for letting me speak freely. Instead of I'm sorry if I've been too much. Oh. I used to apologize a ton. Really? Like six years ago, I went through this phase for like a year where I came into some self-awareness and then I was just not sure about anything. And I was just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then I was just like exhausting myself. I also felt like, that language was making me feel like I was doing something wrong when I actually didn't. I just felt like there was maybe a misunderstanding in the way I was being received and the c- communication between me and whomever. But like, I didn't like the way the language made me feel. And I've become very conscious about what words I use and why. Uh-huh. And like, sometimes I'll say something and it makes me actually feel that that's, uh, I've talked about what I'm about to say on a pod before, but like, sometimes I hear people say like, I have to go to blah, 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 blah. And it's like a cool thing. Yeah. And I think like, you get to go do that thing. Right. And I really like, oh, I have to go do these shows. I get to go. I remember when I couldn't get up. Right. And like that language truly changes the way I see it. It also reminds me of when someone, uh, I don't know, maybe this is not relevant. Someone compliments a show and you didn't like the show. And you're like, that, that was a great show. And that wasn't that good. And you're like, why am I fucking pulling the rug out from under their compliment? You know, it's just like, yeah, they're, they're being nice. And you're like telling them they're wrong. I've had some intentional thoughts about that as well. What do you do about it now? Now I just, I stop myself from doing that. And, Unless it's like another comic who I think I can get really like inside baseball with. Right. Inside but, comedy, you mean? Was that an analogy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to use the Straight term inside one. baseball. <laughs> uh, First base. But yeah, I mean, if someone says, no one, if someone says you did a great job, let them have that. And, and uh, don't they don't need to go. But it was so much better on the, yeah. the Thursday show that I did was actually better. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah, I feel like what helped me was to recognize that by me saying thank you, I'm not subscribing to what they had to say. I just am, I am choosing to trust that they mean it. So like, oh, you thought that was great? Great. Yeah, yeah, you should thank them. My mom said, my mom is very positive and, and upbeat and, and so appreciative of things. And I remember she ate an omelet and she goes, she said, that, that was a kid. And she goes, this is the best omelet I've ever had. And I thought like, that's fucking nuts. <laughs> like, I, we got to remember this place. I believed her. Yeah. Um, and then a week or so, whatever, later, we're someplace else. She's eating an omelet again. And she goes, this is the greatest omelet I've ever had. And I thought to myself, to, I believed her. And I thought, also, how crazy is it that this one was better than the other one? And that if it was the other way around, she would have had the best omelet ever. And then the next time, she wouldn't have thought that because she had one better last week. Right. So it's crazy, not only that these places are great, but the order. And then when she said something else was the best over later, I started to actually not trust her anymore. Like, right. there's no way. There's no way the odds that not only are these the best ever, blah, 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 blah. And then it like, it questioned my, like I started to like question the reality and like the honesty of things. 
And then when I got older, I realized, oh, she is just, she believes it in that moment. This, I love it. This is the best. I'm having the best time. This is the best people, the weather. And she says, and that's not a blanketed statement. I mean, she just truly thinks. And I think some people want to be positive. So they yeah. say that they phrase things like that. Yeah. So when people say good show and I think otherwise, I think, hey, I believe they had a good time. Yeah. But also, dude, you should have seen me Thursday night. Thursday. No, Thursday's when you, that was the good show. Typically, do you ever find that Thursday is the best of, of Thursday, Friday, Saturday? How often does that happen? Um, I do like performing on non-weekend days. Like, I yeah. feel like someone who goes out on a Tuesday is, is something cool about that. You know what I like about a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday? It's not the weekend. It's typically a one-show kind of night. Yeah, yeah. Like that. And you get better door deals inside baseball, second base. Get uh, give, me, give me more of the door. You know how I got a good door deal recently? I did a, a club during the day. What time? Like three and five. Really? I did two shows. Good door deal? A good door deal where the second show. Yeah, I'll do a second show. Yeah. And then you're done by 630 and you got every restaurant's open. And you love to eat. I do love dining. I love dining. What do you like about it? I just love eating. It's my favorite thing to do. One of my favorite things. To do. Is it a community thing for you when you go with other people or even by yourself? I mean, I eat out alone a lot, but... Yeah. Uh, well, you have cats. I have cats. What does that mean? Typically, a cat guy eats them by himself. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, I've got a girlfriend also. That's not, that doesn't f uh, fit into your little stereotype there, does it? Well, uh, I think it still does because it doesn't mean you're lonely. It right. just means you're... Um, typically, people who have cats are comfortable being alone. Really? Yeah. Okay. I never knew that. Do you know anybody with a cat who's not comfortable being alone? I do, actually. I know people who can't eat alone. And they have cats? I know one who's had cats. And, yeah. Has or has? Had well, or has? Had, maybe, but right. I don't think, I mean, that's just, I think there's a reason they didn't get another one. Oh my God. Uh, but yeah, do you eat alone? Yeah. I love doing things alone. I also love doing things with people. Yeah. But some people bring me up. Some people drain me. Some people, it's status quo. But when I'm by myself, I typically go slowly, but I, I re-energize. I love going to movies alone, especially a matinee when I come out. It's still daytime. Yeah. Like if I go to a restaurant, I like eating at home. I just like staying home. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Postmates twice a day. Really? But if I go, if I'm out already, I'm like, I think I'll go to a restaurant. And I go and I get my little things and I wash my hands and I, I make, I, I just, I clean the silverware and I'm like, bring me things. Well, that's the idea of it. Yeah. yeah. Will you throw down for a fancier, like a fancy place? Like if you're on the road. And the place where it's going to cost you $60 for dinner. Yeah. Would you do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, listen, am I a comedian? Yes. Am I also an award-winning dramatic actor? Sure. Not the point. What is that for? Uh, I don't, it's hard to even remember at this point. <laughs> it's from a show called As We See It oh. on Amazon. But I, I have started to make a little bit of money recently. I still live in the same place. I'm not buying extravagant stuff. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I am doing. I'm flying better and I'm eating Whatever I want, whenever I want it. Let's let's talk about hotels. Okay. What's your what are your hotel thoughts? I mean, I, I could give specific hotels if we yeah. talk about the location. Oh yeah. Um. Well, New York or the yeah. Damn, that's got to be what eight hundred a night. Uh. Well, when I bring my podcast stuff, I travel with my podcast. Uh -huh. I have four suitcases. And this last time I went, I it was the first time I actually rented a studio, which ultimately ends up not being cheaper. So I get suites, so it's expensive. I upgraded oh a suite God. so I could make the suite my the podcast studio. And I, I'll write all that stuff off. But like then it, I also feel like I get a suite, but it's work, it's business. I feel like I'm supposed to be doing this. Yeah. Um, I'll take baths and I'll order the room service to come when I get out of sometimes I'll stay in the bath until the room service comes. I was I, I last time I was at the I ordered some salmon and some some other shit. By the way, I don't love salmon, but I feel it's good for me. I just started eating it relatively recently. Thoughts? I, kind of, I like I like it. I was surprised how much I like it. And I like it well done. Don't tell anyone. Do you, do you honestly want me to believe that? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> That'll be funny. Uh, I watched American History X, which is not as funny as I remember. Uh huh. But I like watching a movie in a hotel room. Really? So, you, so if you go, it. let's let me run some things by. Yeah. Let's say you you're going to Indianapolis. I would have to look up the hotels there. I don't know that. Okay. No, I'm not saying which hotel, but will you just stay in your room all day? We find a coffee shop. We find a museum. Right. 
I will try and find a thing to do. I love when I'm in D.C. going to that Holocaust Museum. Really? That seems like a one-visit museum for me. Well, I, I want to make sure I never forget. <laughs> But I'll try to find something to do. And that's a conscious decision because I know if I don't do that, I will not leave. Uh, during the day, yes, I like to go walk and get a coffee. But then once I'm back, I won't, I'll probably stay in the room until it's showtime. I'll do my show and come right back. I will eat at the hotel at least room service at least once, if not all my meals a day. Really? Yeah. I, I almost never get room service. Getting that table with a white tablecloth and the glass of water and the pitcher of water and my honey and my barbecue sauce and all of my things brought to me and I could take little bites, I could eat, I could walk around. Love. I did just uh, say <laughs> weirdly in Chicago. I did a, a guy's, I say in Chicago. Yeah, a nice hotel. The guy's, oh, yeah. guy's birthday party. Me and Rory Scoville. And, uh, Shout out to Rory but, Scoville for his Instagram handle up here. But yeah, my girlfriend and I ordered, they have a Chinese restaurant attached to it. So Is that where you got the size? <laughs> Easy. And then, uh, but we had room service delivered to the pool. Did it come in a bag to go? No, no, no. Like proper? Full tray, full table set up and everything. Love. Yeah. But I, I don't, room service, I always want to get out of the uh, apartment. Great. Or hotel. That's, you know what? You are proving the cat stereotype to not be 100% on point. I do like, I've had the occasional like morning coffee service that they you can get. Like yeah, a biscuit and a, coffee. Yeah, it's a little, it's crazy. Yeah. And That'll I'll, wake you up. Yeah. Uh, so you like fancy hotels? Mm -hmm. Uh, I like fancy hotels because who doesn't like a fancy hotel? Right. But what? But it's a two point swing because not only do I like fancy hotels, when I stay in a hotel that isn't nice, I actually am so uncomfortable. It's what kept me from traveling for so long. Like I could have been touring a while ago. I I chose not to specifically because of flights and hotels. But there's good hotels everywhere. I, I'm talking of being able to afford them. Oh, okay. Like when I was doing shows and they offered me, you know. $3,000 for the weekend and the the flight at the time pre-COVID first class was around 1400 round trip. Now we're looking at 2300 round trip anywhere. And you'll pay that? Well, I would either pay, if I could break even, I would do the show. Really? Yeah. Uh, but but then otherwise I wouldn't. So that's why I stopped. I wasn't traveling really. What if you're on a flight that's 90 minutes? Yeah. If I'm going to Arizona, as long as I get extra leg room, but I fucking hate it. I hate it. Yeah. Hate it. I hate, I, and just the, this so what about uh, yeah I know I, I I noticed that on my flight recently here to LA where I was I was in a economy plus seat and, uh, but it's cramped man Delta plus is decent yeah out of all the economy plus the Delta one I have found to be the most room yeah I'm that way in a car I just I don't like I'm, I'm I'm an uncomfortable I'm actually a very comfortable boy and I've I've done a lot of work to and 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 avoid a lot of things to be there uh huh. So drive, I always drive. I don't like being in a car. If so, I got to get a big car. Okay. So will you ever, let's say you're going to meet in town. You're going to be like, I'm going to land at four in the afternoon, do the show at eight and leave in the morning. You'll get a $600 hotel room? Mm -hmm. Really? I mean, it's an arbitrary price, but I would love to find one for 600. Yeah. Wow. If, yeah. If I'm staying in that bed and I'm using their bed, if I don't feel like, ah, this is a vacation, I'm going to have a hard time. Are there any, so that like you'll never stay at like a courtyard by Marriott or? A, I have and I will. It's a comfortable like it. hotel. Court, uh, Ma a courtyard Marriott's fine. N not to knock it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, I spend money on, on comfort. Yeah. Otherwise I stay in my house. Okay. Tell me about what you do with your food and your days and your going and you do a museum. If I'm traveling more and I want to go outside of my comfort zone, what what is a comic who's been around the block do around the block? I mean, I'll do weird shit. Not weird, like really weird. But like I was in Kenosha, Wisconsin, people. and I went and had a lighthouse. And I just said, I'm going to go to the lighthouse. And I just went up on, paid 10 bucks, I think, and went to this lighthouse. And what did you do? You went up just, and you I looked went out? up the stairs. I looked out. Yeah, I kind of like lighthouses. And so I do stuff like that. That's a good name for a special. I like lighthouses. Yeah, yeah, I saw how you're doing. I, I was in blah, blah, blah. You know me. I, I kind of like lighthouses. Like, that's a good one of those. That's actually not a bad. Yeah. I like lighthouses. Not bad. Yeah. It kind of tells me about you. Yeah. What do, where did your like for lighthouses come from? Fox I, don't, I just thought they're they're kind of cool looking and they're, they're pretty. So you walked up, you looked out, and you thought, all right. Yeah. And then you walked back down. Yeah. I think I probably got dizzy, but, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I always find the the... In the 
third wave coffee shop in town. What does that mean? I think it's like your indie coffee places. Right. I don't know exactly what it means, but. I feel, I feel like people like the type of coffee that kind of symbolizes the type of comedy they do. Like right. You're more of like a third wave type of comedian. Would you say that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an artisanal. Oh, yeah, you're an artisanal comedian. <laughs> Can't believe I use that word, man. It's a fucking huge TV you have. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Is that what you watched my special on? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That must be must have been an unbelievable experience. It was good. It was good. You really got the full effect of the olive green shirt I wore. You know, something about YouTube... I'm all for commercials, believe me. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. Yeah. <laughs> but with a comedy special, I did find that like, uh, how much money do you think you're gonna make with these ads? And is it worth stopping the momentum? I feel like I would do less ads. Were there commercials in the middle of it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. And oh, you could change that. You I might didn't. reach out and ask them to. I didn't know that. That being said, also make your money. So it's just, it's just like uh, choosing your act breaks wisely. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't. I see. I've never watched it on YouTube. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was. It wasn't egregious by any means. It happened. I, I don't even know how many times. Maybe just a few times. Yeah, I just, but still, I was thinking like, maybe I would do the same. I'm not sure. I do wonder if I knew that I was making a special for YouTube, I would maybe like have planned where the commercials would go like while I'm doing it and I would be like commercial you know I remember when I did a Comedy Central half hour that you did 22 minutes or 20 and they said do a 7 minute chunk a 6 minute chunk 5 minute chunk right did you write it for that I did I sort of uh, I didn't write the show for that but I I adjust I think I adjust my set or, yeah it's literally I mean that's that's TV structure I mean yeah. it's, it's act 1, 2 and 3 yeah but it's not broken up just by story it's timing for commercials and it's very like like when writing scripts and looking at the difference between like a traditional sitcom and now where they're streaming, it's like, oh, there's streaming doesn't just offer, you know, differences with what type of content you could do. And it doesn't have to be the exact amount of length and you could have stuff serialized more easily. Yeah. But it's also like the structures of those shows are actually so different and you could have two acts or you could not have them be at those certain markers. Right, right. Um, but like stand up for with commercials versus without it, I, I've noticed it's like kind of that thing. Yeah, I didn't know that. I'll have to look into that. I kind of want to do a podcast episode and call it the commercial episode. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and just let the audience know, hey, you know what? We're going to bring you great stuff, but I really want you to sit through it all. Every two minutes, we're going to cut to a commercial <laughs> and see if people stick around and donate the money to like paying my bills or something. Yeah, you could just do the Patreon route. Yeah, but who's paying for that? I think people would rather watch a commercial than pay for no commercials when yeah. it comes to content. That's what I feel about public radio, man. Like they, they spend 15 minutes begging for money. It's like, I just play a Cheetos commercial. Yeah. What's the difference as far as annoying me? Sometimes it's hard to get Cheetos to sign off. I've been oh, trying to get Cheetos sounds so good right now. You know what I have, which you might like, which I don't eat and you like snacks. Let me show you. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> It isn't a Cheeto, but I think you'll understand why Cheetos made me think of this. I had a friend on my podcast who gave, brought me this as a gift, and I don't eat peanuts. Oh, and I got I know you love Bombas, right? Well, the socks. Uh, I, I don't eat peanuts. Oh. Do you know those things? I have had. I've had either these or similar things. I can have these? Um... Yeah. Or you want me to just eat some now? No, no, you could have them. I don't want to eat them now because it's all crunchy. And I, I don't well, want... I, what I would do if you ate them is we would turn your microphone off while the crunch happened. No, no. We look out for our goblins. I have, but... a, I have uh, misophonia, so I would. Yeah. Do you know about misophonia? I mean, she was my physics teacher in 10th grade. Oh, there you go. I set you up for that one. Yeah, you did. Uh, and yes, I am also similar with sounds. Okay. Um, will you show the, the people at home in case they know what those are? Hey, These, here they're great. Yeah, they are good. You're allergic to peanuts? Took a blood test, as you can imagine, years ago, and it said uh, an intolerance to peanuts. I had been eating peanuts. Uh -huh. I'm like, maybe I should stop eating peanuts. I stopped eating for a few years. I accidentally had one, and then I felt. So I don't know, but well, I don't it, eat them. Yeah, if you're intolerant, you might as well not eat them. Yeah. But a friend brought you those. Yeah. Well, how, how close was he? Yeah. To not know. Here, I got you. You know that thing you're allergic to? Here's three pounds of it. Yeah. But, you know, some people might do that as a gag. <laughs> 
that's hilarious. It'd be only be funny if you had like a deadly peanut allergy. Yeah. Or like, like when you're a Jewish kid, sometimes you'll get a Game Boy night one and then night two through eight, you'll get the batteries for it or something. Yeah. So like as a follow, you know, you could have to open this first. Uh, but, and then, uh, the first gift is the EpiPen <laughs> and then, you know, give oh, yeah, that's stuff. good. Yeah. I like that. You know, a lot of these young, young content creators are doing wild stuff, little pranks, pranking their friends. Uh-huh. Um, one I haven't seen that I feel like may, I wonder if it's been done is somebody doing like they get the gang of their friends to do the stuff they're allergic to, but they all have EpiPens and like see who could not use their EpiPen for the longest. Oh, and then maybe someone dies. and then. Well, that's why I don't think they should do it. No, it's probably. Maybe you do it with things you're intolerant to instead of allergic. I think that's a classic good idea on paper. Um, is that similar to um, when you got that second coffee today? What's that? Where like you like yeah, the good idea. idea yeah, I like the, yeah. I think even as I ordered, I thought, why am I doing this? I don't know why I didn't go the iced tea route. How boring am I being right now? Pretty boring. I don't think so. The only thing that I'm unsure, I mean, I've seen you yawn nine times, <laughs> but the only thing I'm unsure of oh, I got is, jet lag, man. Um, how are your arms? Oh, oh hi, yo. Hi. <laughs> One of the things that I'm just unsure of and I'm totally fine with is like, I know I like you and I know I think you're very funny. Yeah. I also know that I'm not going to know what, like, I am not looking for any data from you. Okay. I don't know what I would get and what it would even look like. Yeah. But I am aware that we are very different. Uh huh. And I feel like I'm playing with someone I want to play with. And I might find out later they want to play with me again. They never want to play with me again or anywhere in the middle. Oh. But like I'm sitting in this I'm aware being of mysterious. like. What's that? I'm being mysterious. Is that what you're saying? Uh, gee, I mean, did you go to my high school? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, actually, I think she was married. I'm going to look up Mrs. Mysterious for a second. <laughs> I, uh, you know, like I'm just talking way more than you. And people are going to be like, Rick, you're talking too much? Or can people be like, is... Am I cutting you off? Do you off? have uh, guests who talk more than me? Because I feel like we're you're talking, then I'm answering you, and you're asking me, and I'm talking to you. I have done. I'm asking you the occasional question. I have done solo podcasts where there's a producer there. Yeah, that's not really true, and I just realized that might be like making fun. I was going to say they've talked more, but no, I feel like I'm I'm fucking going going. Well, I mean, it's your. I don't know you. It's your podcast. I got to f- let you sort of set the tone. Yeah. Until the tone annoys me, and then I will shoot it down. But uh, oh, good to know. Would you? <laughs> no, only. I mean, if you, I should no, no. I mean, no, it's fine. It's I, fine. I like when somebody tells me something like "stop." Really? Oh yeah. Well, since you asked that, go ahead. Uh, stop. No. Do you like doing this? If you weren't, um, if you weren't promoting your special, like, do you like doing runs? Because I don't see you doing. T- I've seen you doing, but I don't see you doing a lot of podcasts. I mean, I'm doing an unusual amount this time. Yeah, I like doing them. Yeah, yeah, I like a nice little chat. Yeah, who else? Like, who else am I going to talk to? Uh, your cat. Oh, I miss my little cat. I really want to get cats, dude. Get a cat. Get two cats. I know, of course. Do you have room for a litter box here? Yeah, and I know where I would put them too. Oh, say. I've I've thought about where I would put them and what kind of boxes I'd be getting. Really? Yeah. Uh, I would put one in this guest bathroom down here, but make sure that I move it the night before I have somebody on a podcast. I would just put it somewhere else. Uh, that, not like a place where it's at. I would just put it upstairs just in the hallway or something. Oh, you have upstairs. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I would want one upstairs. Oh, wow. You have a fancy place. What is this, what, two bedroom? Um, well, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because whenever I eat here, I think that because my place is so fancy, I'm having a fancy feast. So I feel like that would be a great way to feed the cats. Oh, there you go. Put up a picture of Fancy Feast for the people that don't get it. <laughs> I got that one. Fancy Feast. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That That's was you, reacting. the audience reacting to it. That's me reacting to the... Um, uh, we were just talking about something. You said you don't something, and that's why we, I said you have a cat. What was that? Oh, oh who else would I talk to? Uh, yeah, you said you're doing an unusual amount of podcasts. Yeah. You're promoting this more than other things? No, I just haven't had anything to promote in a long time. Right. And I thought I would, uh, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I guess technically. <laughs> so I might as well go for it. How, what have you done for this run so far? I've done 
Neil Brennan's podcast blocks. Mm -hmm. I did Mark WTF. Mm -hmm. I did Ron Funch's podcast. You know him, right? Yeah. I know all of them. Uh, Today I'm doing one. I forgot the name of it. And then I'm doing. Do you know who it is? Or obviously you forgot that too. It's someone I did. I I don't think I know them, but I'm blanking. And I'm doing Dog Pounds and Brent Weinbox today. Tomorrow I'm doing Dog Pound is not the same as Brent Weinbach, is it? No, no. Right. I know that, I know that's I'm separate. doing dumb Brendan Walsh's podcast. And and that's why you're in LA? Yeah, you know, and I do a few live shows. I'm doing a well, I'm doing a show. I'm doing a hot tub tonight. Ooh. Unannounced. That people are gonna lose their shit you when gotta I walk do up. unannounced. It's fun, man. People fucking lose their shit when I walk up there. Would you, since this is not gonna come out until uh after you leave, would yeah. you reveal the hotel you're staying at? I'm staying at someone's apartment. They have an empty apartment and I'm staying. Oh, you give it to yourself. Yeah. So your room service is Postmates? I don't know. My room service is leaving. Where do you go to eat when you're in LA? I mean, last night I went, I ate with Sarah Silverman at a nice vegan Italian restaurant. Uh, Crossroads? No, it's like, Puma, pom pom, poopa, puma, rita, pura rita, pura vita, pura vita, I think it was called. I don't know. I think I know it. I, yeah. I try to eat vegan multiple times a week. I wonder if I, I would, maybe I'll look into that. Yeah, it's all, it's all veg. Um, have you been to Langer's yet? Langer's? What is that? Do you eat pastrami? I'm not a, I'm Jewish, but I'm not into our food, really. Are you Jewish? Yeah. I'm joking. You don't eat pastrami. I don't think I've even tried pastrami, but it's also, not good for you. Right. But a nice a nice burger I would eat without even thinking twice. The Langer's pastrami sandwich is not only the best pastrami in the country, and I've had a lot of the pastrami around the country. Uh-huh. It's a, it's one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. Really? Is it just like piled high? Yeah, but you could, I, I typically will get two slices of rye bread um, in addition and turn it into two sandwiches. And will you eat both sandwiches? I will, I, I'll, I'll inhale them. Are you a dessert guy? <laughs> Buddy. I'm trying. I'm I'm doing all right now, but yeah, big dessert guy. Yeah, I've been eating a lot of dried mangoes to try and curb my sugar cravings. But those are probably pretty sugary themselves. Yeah, but they're 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 not. It's not refined sugar, and it's though dried. It's still fibrous, so it doesn't yeah. metabolize the same way. Have you? You know, I just got turned on to recently was these freeze dried berries at uh, Trader Joe's. Freeze dried berry medley. Oh my god. Yeah, I love dried fruit. That's pretty good for you. Well, as a treat, it's still sugar. Yeah, but what well, desserts do you do? Um, I find I, I order dessert, and I often like, yeah, let's get dessert, and then afterwards, I'm like, oh, why did I? I feel sick. Like I almost ordered dessert last night, and we we decided against it. And I felt really good when I got home. I was like, I didn't need to eat half a piece of chocolate cake. Yeah. Oh, well, that sounds good right now. Though. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking about tiramisu. That's oh, my, tiramisu that's my is unbelievable. Right that's unbelievably good tasting. Yeah. A nice vanilla cake. Oh my god! I find a vanilla cake could be pretty boring. And oh, pardon the, the pardon the play on words here, but vanilla. Oh, it's so good. Moist, good with a nice with a nice uh, icing, perhaps. Yeah. But vanilla cake, it's like, what are we doing? Um, I'll tell you what we're doing. We're fucking, I'll mean your your cake then. But you could have vanilla cake in a tuxedo cake, for example. What's a tuxedo cake? Is that vanilla, chocolate layers, black white, black white? What pizza toppings are you into? Well. I'm going to preface by saying I don't eat cheese. Why is that? Lactose intolerant? I don't like cheese. You don't like cheese? Wow, that's an int- I don't think I've ever met anyone who doesn't like cheese. So I go, I'm, 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 I head over to matzah for pizza. And you know me, don't even eat cheese. I ate it the other one, the one around the fancier matzah, not the pizza. I shouldn't say the fancier, but the more, the one where they have pasta at matzah. Is that not, is that a different location? I think they have, I think they have a pizza place next to a restaurant. Oh, gotcha. Well, I think I know what you're talking about, because but the restaurant still is gets the pizza from there. Okay. I actually filmed a scene of a TV show in that fancy restaurant wow. you're talking about. It was about. good. That food was good. Cut to a clip. I want you to know that it doesn't matter to me that you have autism. Would you have known if my father didn't tell Dr. Mandar, which he definitely... Would you have known? I did notice something was a little different. <laughs> What were you going to say? About my favorite toppings? Yeah. Or uh, Well, I don't do cheese. Yeah. Um, but I like garlic. Oh, yeah. 
when you say garlic, what do you picture with the garlic? How is this garlic prepared for you? On the pizza? Yeah. Fresh garlic. So you like raw garlic? I get, yeah, I mean, I guess- Like it can, minced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it cooks when the pizza- It doesn't. I mean, it heats up. Yeah. But you really need- I, I'll oh, ask I like for it. garlic, but I ask for, to have it either sauteed or if it's cloves that are baked, I'll, I'll do that. I yeah. love a big clove. Oh, yeah. And pinch, spread it on little fucking bread. <sighs> Jesus. You know, I, I um, sometimes at home- when I when I cook, I I do garlic a lot. Just uh-huh. a lot of garlic stuff, and I'll make I, I like meal prep my garlic so I could have this garlic for all the other meals that I'm not even yeah. cooking for however long it lasts. Yeah. And what I do is I roast a shit ton of garlic. Okay. Uh, I put a little bit of red chili flakes, oh. avocado oil, salt and pepper. Yeah. And then I blend it like in a you know a food processor. Yeah, that's um, a lot of work. But then you have this garlic paste. Yeah. Um, that's not raw. It's it's palatable. You could eat it with a spoon. And I'll just base the fuck out of. Pardon me, bleep that. I will just you know spread the fuck out of everything. Love it. Wow. And then I'll eat maybe a pound of basil. I love basil. Here are the good toppings. You got your. I would have cheese on mine, but I'd have pepperoni, fresh jalapenos. Love fresh jalapenos. Garlic, fresh garlic. That'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to put sausage on there, you could do that. So you'll eat pepperoni and sausage, but not pastrami. I've never tried pastrami. I probably would like it. When you're in New York, if you're going to try it, Sarge is over cats, just so you know. Oh, yeah, I, used to, I used to live near uh, Katz's, and that, that was the number one place if someone needed directions. That's where... People like, how do you get the cats? They'll be like... Some, I used to... I still do this. Well, I'll, if I see someone's lost... Even though they, everyone's got their Google Maps now, they probably don't need to do this. I'll be like, I'll be a busybody and go, do you need help find something? And quite often it was, we're looking for cats. Do you think it's because they know of you and they know how much of a cat guy you are? Because of well, cats? Oh my God. Uh, yeah, you blew it on that one. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought that was a perfect joke. My mom does a lot of cat puns, but I don't need to get into it now. I, I like that you didn't say perfect. No, no, that would have been a, that would be too on the nose. Yeah. Um, do you do pepperoni and sausage or do you pepperoni or I sausage? I mean, I probably would just have pepperoni. But if, if someone said, can we do sausage too? I'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. Do you try to eat meatless sometimes? Or is that just because Sarah is, is she vegan? She's vegan, yeah. She's vegetarian. She's not vegan. But. Sorry. I, this is how shit gets spread. Just make sure I mean, people can take a sound bite, you know, but <laughs> vegetarian. Because there's a, a, an Italian vegan restaurant called Crossroads. Uh-huh. And they have this pizza with this vegan sausage that is so good. Yeah? Yeah. Fuck, I want food right now. I'm really hungry. It's too There's no food around here, man. Um, do you want to... No, I don't want to open these crunchy things okay. and start eating. We could also, like, listen, I don't want to hold you hostage. Um, I'll chat with you for a little bit longer. We could call it if you yeah. want to eat. So, yeah, because I have another podcast yeah. to do it, too. Uh, you don't know who it is, though. I could look it up. But then you won't want to say it because then it's going to be like, oh, okay. you, you know. Yeah, but we have been here. After. I've been here like four hours. So. Yeah. Well, it's it's been uh, it's been eighty minutes. <laughs> it's, it's a little long. Um. Yeah. Let's call it, dude. All right, man. Congrats on the special. It's really thank really funny. You. Oh, thank you for watching. Um, it. All right. Anything else you want to plug? Any social? I'm on tour. Anything? I have the half joking tour that I'm on. So uh, I have some of these pre-recorded, so I'm not sure the exact date this comes out, but we'll look at your website and yeah. whatever it is for the next month plus, we'll put it up on video okay. so people can see. But audio only, they could go to, to find out, toddberry.org. Uh, toddberry.com. Nice. You got it? Oh, yeah. I have it forever. Okay. Yeah. Great. And, uh, you know, I'm Todd Barry at, on Instagram, Todd Barry on, I'm not going to call it X, Twitter. Right. That's how a lot of people come from Cleveland. A lot of people uh, still refer to them as the Indians instead of the Guardians. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's similar good. thing. I guess it's similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, there. That, I think that's all you need to know. I think you did it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a Polaroid of you. Really? And then I'll, yeah. All right. Then I'll walk you out. Uh, as I say at the end of every episode, how many people have you slept with? My name's Rick Glassman, <laughs> and stick around next week for Bill Bellamy. Is that true, Bill Bellamy? I don't know. I'm going to really work and try and get this to happen now. Scoot doo, blabbery blue, scoot dee, oh 